Tell me what all this means, the excitement that we see in the Democrat Party. Uh, do, do you share that excitement? Well, uh, uh, excitement and enthusiasm, uh, it ends up as the mother's milk to successful politics. And we have gallons and gallons uh, of enthusiasm. And I think that it is very, becoming very clear that uh, the, the enthusiasm we have now, even though some are matching it with 2008 when Obama ran, I think this is even different because uh, women have gotten excited. Uh, people who were independents have gotten excited. And if, and if you look at the polling, it's the independents who are coming on over to, to Harris. Uh, uh, Donald Trump is not uh, getting any of, the, any of them, and so uh, it means we're still going to have a tight race. But I don't think there's any question. The, the turnout's going to be enormous, mm -hmm. and I think women are going to uh, make the decision. They're gonna, in the final analysis, the, the women's vote is going to determine who the next president of the United States is. What's the challenge of bringing America together, crossing over division, becoming a more united America? Well, I think we're going to have to have leaders, uh, first and foremost in the Oval Office, uh, who with great intentionality uh, spends time and effort uh, trying to get people to, to come together. And I don't mean uh, you know just voting, getting Republicans to vote with Democrats, uh, I'm talking about going out into the country and actually uh, putting hard work into dealing with people. We, we've got to go into rural areas, uh, uh, places where there's not a lot of uh, diversity, and, and, and start talking. Uh, when I was mayor of Kansas City, I put together a program called Harmony in a World of, World of Difference. And I spent eight years as mayor, not only trying to get bridges repaired and, and new buildings constructed, but also trying to construct new relationships. And I think, uh, that, Senator, that, that Vice President Harris is, is uh, interested in doing that. And I, I think with, uh, with President Trump, former President Trump, I, I think he's already probably damaged any opportunity he might have had uh, with his name calling. You know, I, I've got to be brief because I know you want to get in there to the main hall. You've also based your life on faith and service and hope. How important is that? What was what was the thing that turned you into being a man of faith and serving the public and having hope for America? I grew up in public housing. Uh, I mean, we were poor. Uh, before we lived in public housing, uh, we lived in a shack. And when I say shack, I don't mean a run-down house. I mean a shack, a uh, two-room shack. And um, uh, I come from a family of, of pastors and religious people. And no matter how poor we were, uh, every Sunday morning we, we were up with ragged clothes sometimes going to church uh, and you couldn't eat dinner without saying a prayer. You could not uh, go to bed at night without saying a prayer. And then my, uh, my mom, for example, had an old Bible, I still have it, uh, where she, my three sisters and I sit on the floor and she'd read the Bible to us. Uh, and I don't know, I, I don't think I could make it. I know I couldn't make it without having uh, my uh, my soul anchored uh, to something greater than all of us, and it's, it's God Almighty.